I can't take it anymore. Kill me already. At the heartbreaking cry of my emaciated daughter chained up, I was left speechless. I headed to my daughter's house, where contact had been lost shortly after her marriage. What I saw there was the pitiful state of my beloved child. Was the promise of happiness from the son-in-law, who vowed to take care of her, a lie? I won't forgive this, no matter what. Trembling with anger, I vowed to return my daughter's suffering twofold to that man. Having lost my husband to illness at an early age, I raised my daughter Iris single-handedly while working as a nursery teacher. There were many challenges, both financially and emotionally, but we overcame them together with my honest and gentle daughter. I worked at the nursery until I was 60, and in the year I retired, Iris's marriage was discussed. And when the day for my daughter's wedding was set, various thoughts raced through my mind, filling my heart. However, when Iris introduced her husband Oliver to me, the impression wasn't very good. Eight years older than my daughter, he had a somewhat commanding tone towards Iris, perhaps because of that. He greeted me properly and remained polite throughout, but even when Iris made tea for Oliver, he didn't say thank you and acted as if he didn't notice. He might be domineering, but somehow I felt there was more to it, and it bothered me somewhere deep in my heart. However, my daughter, who lost her father at a young age, might have been seeking some shadow of a father figure in Oliver, who was eight years older. Iris is a modest type, so maybe someone who takes charge like him is a better fit. I had concerns about Oliver's attitude, but it's natural for any parent to worry when marrying off their child. So, I decided to reconsider and warmly watch over their future together. Moreover, seeing Iris happily supporting him at the wedding, I felt reassured. After registering their marriage, the daughter and son-in-law began living in the house where he originally lived. Although it was in the same city as my house, Oliver's residence was on the outskirts of the city, surrounded by fields, with hardly any other houses nearby. I was a little worried that Iris might feel lonely, but I heard that Oliver had started his own business about six years ago, making use of the land. Apparently, he sold vegetables from surrounding farms through online sales, and Iris was enthusiastic about helping Oliver with his work since their marriage. His shop has high ratings online. I really respect him. I want to do my best to support him as a wife too. Yes, yes, make sure you do. But don't overdo it from the start. Seeing Iris, determined with pink cheeks, made me feel relieved and amused. You really love Oliver, don't you? I'll support you too. Moreover, Iris's words seemed to be true. Oliver's business was indeed going quite smoothly, and I had heard that he was steadily repaying the loans he had taken out when starting the business. I believed that my daughter was living happily with her beloved person. However, about a month after Iris got married, communication with her started to dwindle. She used to send me a message every three days, saying she didn't want me to worry, but suddenly those messages stopped coming, and even when I messaged Iris, she didn't even read them. I wonder if something happened? I can't even reach her by phone. Becoming worried, I called the landline at my daughter and son-in-law's house instead of her mobile, but her husband answered and said he was busy, not letting me talk to Iris. When I tried calling again later, I found out that calls from both my daughter's mobile and the landline at their house were being rejected. What on earth? This is really strange. Filled with unease, I couldn't sit still and drove to check on my daughter's condition. Even though the distance by car was only about 20 minutes, it felt incredibly far, but I managed to arrive at my daughter and son-in-law's house. At first glance, Oliver's car was not parked there. 
I had heard that during weekdays, my daughter often visited farms, so she might be out. For the time being, I headed to the front door and pressed the intercom, but there was no response. Are you not home? But I can't leave until I confirm Iris's safety. No matter how many times I rang the doorbell, there was no response, so I approached the front door. Iris? Are you there? It's your mom, sorry for coming all of a sudden. M.O. There. Taking a chance and calling out, I faintly heard my daughter's voice coming from the back of the house. Hastily, I made my way to the yard, and what I saw there was an unbelievable sight. I can't take it anymore. Kill me already. Under the cold winter sky, Iris muttered those words, her eyes unfocused, her cheeks sunken, bearing no resemblance to her former self. But what shocked me the most was the fact that my daughter's limbs were chained. Why is Iris in this state? What is Oliver doing? Unable to accept the reality immediately, various questions raced through my mind, but above all, helping my daughter was the priority. Iris, mom will help you now. Just hold on a little longer. I tried to encourage her, but she only nodded weakly. Her appearance only increased my anxiety. A few minutes later, I managed to unchain her, and I could finally free my daughter. Your body is freezing. Let's get inside and warm up first. As I tried to put a jacket on my trembling daughter and lead her inside, she started trembling as if she was scared of something. This is definitely not right. It might be better to take her to my house. I put Iris in the car, worried about her condition, and decided to take her to the hospital first. Although she was physically and mentally weakened, fortunately, there were no serious issues, and she was able to return home after receiving intravenous fluids just to be safe. Returning to the house where my daughter and I had lived together for many years, Iris seemed to regain some composure. Here, drink this and warm up. If it's too much, you don't have to force yourself. What happened? After making hot milk tea, which Iris loved, I broached the subject. Thank you. Well, you see. As Iris took a sip of the milk tea, she began to speak little by little, revealing something shocking. It turns out, shortly after they got married and started living together, Oliver began to abuse Iris whenever something displeased him. Furthermore, she was made to work tirelessly from morning till night, ordered to find new farms to procure vegetables, and if she couldn't, she wasn't allowed into the house. I hugged my daughter as she said that, but at that moment, her phone started ringing continuously. When Iris looked at the screen, her complexion changed instantly. Curious, I looked at my daughter's phone and saw several messages from my son-in-law saying, Where did you go? I won't let this slide. Iris, give your phone to mom. Take a break for today, I suggested, wanting my daughter to feel at ease. After taking her to the room she used before getting married, I sat in the living room thinking about the future, and once again, my daughter's phone rang. As expected, it's him calling, I said to myself. The caller was indeed Oliver. Hey, Iris. You think you can just go off with your mom? I'll make sure both of you regret it. When I answered the phone, my son-in-law, mistaking me for my daughter, suddenly started yelling. Oliver, this is Iris's mother. How dare you treat my daughter so badly? What the? You took my wife without permission. I'm coming over there right now. As my son-in-law revealed his true nature, he raised his voice threateningly. If you come over, I'll call the police, I said calmly, 
to which I heard Oliver click his tongue in irritation. Damn it, I'll let it slide today, but this isn't over yet. With frustration evident in his voice, my son-in-law hung up the phone. Feeling that I couldn't delay any longer in facing Oliver's wrath, I immediately took action to rescue Iris from her husband the next day. About a week after protecting my daughter, Oliver showed up at my house in a fury. Reluctantly answering the persistent doorbell, I found Oliver standing there like a demon. Oh. Didn't I tell you I'd call the police if you came over? It's not about that. Oliver seemed to have rushed here as he was out of breath, showing signs of considerable agitation. You're out of breath. I thought you'd be coming around this time. Knowing that my son-in-law would come, I welcomed him without hesitation, despite his sudden visit. What's the rush? The contract farmers suddenly stopped supplying vegetables, and I can't do business anymore. Oh my, that's quite a problem. Suppressing the urge to laugh at his predicament, I casually replied, and Oliver glared at me fiercely. What do you mean by that? You know what you did. Oliver, appearing to be on the verge of grabbing me, began to edge closer and closer. So, I showed him Iris's smartphone and played a certain voice recording. What came through the recording was Oliver's angry shout. I'll make sure both of you regret it. W what is this? This is the voice from when you called Iris before. I let various people listen to it. W what? Who did you let listen to it? In fact, every year at the nursery school where I had worked for many years, I used to go to the nearby farms for sweet potato digging and rice planting. I still have friendly relations with several farmers, so I let them listen to the recording and exposed Oliver's true nature. His story quickly spread throughout the nearby farming community. It's everyone in the nearby farms. They were all very surprised. Upon hearing this, Oliver turned red with anger. What have you done? I'll sue you for obstruction of business. Who's in trouble here? The farmers said they were originally fed up with your attitude. Initially, it seemed that my son-in-law had been cautious around the farmers, but as soon as his online shop became successful, he became overbearing. So the farmers got together and decided not to supply vegetables to you. You brought this upon yourself. My son-in-law, who had no words to retort to my argument, stomped his feet in frustration. However, it seemed he had come up with something as his face suddenly lit up. You know, Iris is with me. She's on my side. Oliver declared loudly and started looking around. Oh, Iris. It's been a while. I missed you. Spotting my daughter, Oliver approached her with a flattering tone. Iris, you finally came out. It's okay because mom is here. Hearing Oliver's voice, my daughter summoned her courage, nodded vigorously in response to me, and turned to face him. Oliver, I won't obey you anymore. My daughter firmly rejected him, leaving my son-in-law looking bewildered for a moment, unsure of what was happening. Oliver, what do you think you did to Iris? There's no way she would ally with you. What can you two silly women do? I'm not wrong. I'll sue both of you together, so brace yourselves. Seeing my son-in-law's uncooperative attitude, my daughter sighed deeply. Oliver, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep up with you. Let's get a divorce. Why yeah. Try if you can. I won't admit it even if you come crying later. Perhaps he hadn't expected to be told such a thing by my daughter, but Oliver remained defiant to the end, 
albeit flustered. Oliver, you'll be the one facing the judgment of the law. Saying so, I thrust the divorce mediation application in front of him. W. What's this? I've already hired a lawyer. What you've done is a serious offense. We're also prepared to take legal action. Perhaps feeling pressured by the mention of lawyers and lawsuits, Oliver suddenly started sweating profusely from his forehead and began to apologize. No matter how much you apologize, I'll never forgive you. First, apologize sincerely to Iris. With a firm tone, I demanded this from Oliver, who then clung to Iris, begging for forgiveness. Iris, I was wrong. I won't do it again. I'll accept your apology. But we're still getting divorced. As Iris said this, my son-in-law looked pathetic, clinging to her and refusing to let go. I don't want a divorce. Don't abandon me. Don't talk like everything's fine after tormenting my daughter. We'll proceed with the divorce through the lawyer, and I won't let you see my daughter anymore. Peeling Oliver away from my daughter, I declared firmly and escorted him out of the house. After that, with the help of a lawyer, Iris's divorce was successfully finalized. She demanded $30,000 in compensation from Oliver. His online shop suffered from a lack of fresh vegetables, and its reputation plummeted online. Despite his efforts to recover, including borrowing money from dubious sources, he ended up going out of business. With the payment of compensation and the ballooning debt repayment looming over him, it's unclear what he'll do next. Meanwhile, Iris gradually regained her physical and mental health and began looking for a job for the future. While enjoying life with my daughter, I also joined a handicraft circle to enjoy my own life. How did you like this story? Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Well then, see you in the next video.